Riva del Garda, a beautiful location and a show which promises to be stacked with the latest and greatest of EMTV tech. Okay, let's uh, kick things off with something pretty special. This is the all new uh, Rotfield RX275. Uh, it's possibly the closest thing you'll get to a mountain bike at 15.4 kilos. Remember, many mountain bikes out there are around about 14, 15 kilos for a 140, 150 bike. Uh, so the basis of this bike is 130, 120, 29 inch wheels, uh, TQ motor and a 260 watt hour battery. It does have a range extender of 120, giving you 480. But I think the very special thing about this bike, not only the weight, but also the way they have designed the software for this bike. Now, many TQ bikes give you 360 watts peak. This bike is designed to give you 200 watts peak. There's three modes in it. There's like a, a transfer mode, there's the trail mode and the full power mode. But in each of those modes, it only gives you 200 watts. But get this, there's this little control on the handlebar, which when you push it, gives you full 300 watts power. So what that means is there's no remote on the handlebar and I think this is a first in the e-mountain bike world. So I think it's, it really gives you, well I haven't ridden it, but I'm guessing it's gonna give you peace of mind. You're not gonna be continually going from, you know, low power to mid power to full power. You simply just push the button, boom, full power. So when you're riding a trail like this, you're probably on the button quite a lot of the time. Now, a great thing about going around a festival, you'll get to see lots of cutouts of frames, so you'll get to see the quality of the manufacturer. This is a Rotfield RX275, and you can see the mix here of, um, of UD, unidirectional, and also the 4K cloth, which is featured in, in some of the more stress-related uh, areas of the frame. So, beautiful bike, you can see some fine detail here, There's some foam in the C-tube area. Yeah, beautiful. An interesting design from Vent uh, in Bergamo, Italy. This is a 160, 150 bike with a Brose motor, 630 watt hour battery. But you don't actually get to see many bikes with a top tube mounted shock absorber. I think it's actually pretty unique in the mountain bike world. Um, this bike is fully clad in FSA gear, FSA e-bike specific wheels, FSA e-bike cranks, and um, yeah, it's a full carbon bike. Like I said, it's from Bergamo, made in Italy. It's a new bike with a with a motorcycle background. You might have seen it on the on the show which we featured a few months ago. But actually, see bikes in the flesh is quite different. Now this bike has got a Brose motor. There's another bike over here which I'll introduce you to in a minute. Um, interesting times, I think. We've seen Fantic with the same motor. We've seen, obviously, the Specialized has got their own version of Brose motor. There's been speculation that the new SRAM motor is from Brose. So, um, yeah, this, let's check out this bike over here. This is, this, is a, this is Feds from Germany. This is more of an Enduro bike, uh, 160, 150. Uh, again, full carbon. Not actually heard of Feds before, so maybe Feds is my new bike, which I always seem to find at bike festivals. Cool van, hot shoes. Holger Meyer from Scott has been to Garda. How many years, Holger? Uh, I don't know, but maybe it's my 30th uh, year here at uh, Bike Festival Lake Garda, and I'm still enjoying it. I don't know why. I mean, it's. Uh, oh, yeah, I know why, because it's the sun, it's cappuccino, it's. Red wine and some pizza. Give us a, give us a clue of two of your favorite trails in Garda. Um, one that is a really classic uh, would be up there to Pregazina. It's a little village up um, with a lake view. And there's a saying that uh, the chickens that live there, they have a cage around their ass. So the eggs wouldn't roll down to the lake, right? <laughs> And Holger's here with his all-new Scott Lumen bike. Holger, talk us quickly through your uh, your own spec on this bike. Well, the, the spec is I have different wheels. I have Newman wheels, Conti tires, and then I have uh, SRAM equipped, uh, dampening uh, front and rear, and Esculap handlebar, Esculap saddle. TQ motor is standard, and um, it's an awesome ride. What? So what travels this bike? This is 140, right? It's 140 in the front, 130 in the uh, in the back. And you go for heavyweight tires or lightweight tires? So-so, mm, uh, it's enduro casting. Okay. They're probably prototypes, right? 
No, they are uh, available <laughs> in the shops uh, throughout uh, Europe, I okay. hope. Uh, now, I mentioned recently that uh, Bafang are on the move. Well, actually, that's not true because they're already on the move. Uh, check out this uh, 820 motor, 75 newton meters, 420 watts peak, super compact. Uh, we've got that in this bike behind me here. So this looks like a, this is a, a Bafang specific bike just for demonstration, but I do think we will see more brands with this bike and with this motor in the future. Uh, looking at wide cadence range, which is quite an important uh, feature of e-bike motors, 20 to 120 RPM, magnesium casing. And as you can see, I'm, I'm sure you can see the scale of this motor in my hand here. It's super compact. And obviously being a mid drive, that gives it an advantage uh, when it comes to these lower power bikes. But on my right here is the existing 510 motor. Now, what I did mention actually, that's 75 Newton meters. The 510 motor, is actually 95 newton meters so possibly one of the the strongest e-bike motors on the market uh, 520 watts peak compared to the 420 watts peak on the 820 motor on this bike here this is a barrier from spain We've got a 720 watt hour battery in the down tube uh, and all i can say is i'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a bafang bike because from the stuff i've ridden before super positive Oh my god, so much to talk about on the cube stand. Let's start off with the recently launched 155. Uh, I think the great story about this bike is the fact that Cube have offered it with the 750 watt hour battery, which is removable, but you can also fit a 500 watt hour battery in the down tube with a bit of space for storage. So I think for many people, you know, we've talked about battery capacity a lot on the channel. You know, it's the option of having a lightweight bike, say 21 kilos, or even a even lighter white bike at uh, say 20 kilos. Um, this bike comes in three models, the SLT, the SLX, and the TM. But I want to turn our attention now to the whole business of the different models within a certain range. Now, one of the reasons that we don't test and review bikes on EMBN, although we do provide you guys with the kind of tools to be able to make the right decision, is simply the fact that if you test a bike, it is simply one bike in the range. Now, take Cube as an example. This is the Stereo Hybrid 160. It comes in five different models. You've got the SLT, the Action Team, the TM, the SLX and the race. Obviously there's different colors, there's different battery configurations on all of those bikes. So for example, if you choose the TM, that bike has got heavier hitting forks, it's got bigger tires, it's got heavier casing tires. So that bike is actually gonna perform quite differently to say a, a race version of the same bike. So when you test and review bikes, you're only actually testing one bike. Uh, you know what moment this is, don't you? This is the moment where we look at a new brand, but except this time it's not a new brand. We actually saw Alpec last year. They're a brand from Turin. Uh, 160 travel on this Runa Ultimate. And a uh, key part of this bike is the fact it's got the Bafang 510 motor, which I'll look at in detail just over here. The heart of the Runa bike, which is the Bafang 510 motor, which get this, if you want a powerful motor, 95 newton meters of torque. And the price of that bike is 5,400 euros. Now, if you come to a bike festival and you're wondering about what size bike to ride, have no fear. All the technicians and mechanics will be here to help you set up your bike in terms of suspension and also the size of your bike too. Always on the lookout for strong performing brakes for e-bikes. This is the TRP DHR EVO, 223mm uh, uh, diameter and 2.3 wide. So this is a brake that's actually used by the common cell downhill team. So nice bit of kit. Elmar Kainiki. Kainiki? Kainika. Kainiki. Yeah, you know how to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, Elmar. Uh, so we're at Fox, by the way. Elma, we get lots of questions about what is actually the difference between an e-bike specific fork and a standard fork. Can you give me the quick answer on that, please? Yeah, there's a quick, long answer to it. <laughs> so actually, we've got two different uh, configurations that we're looking at here. So for the 38, for example, uh, we've been trying to focus on the setup of the compression damping um, because there is a slight difference between the average user of an e-bike and someone who is trying to attempt the Enduro World Cup, right? So, with that being said, uh, our forks, the factory series, particularly with the Grip 2 damper, are set up out of the box to be performing at World Cup levels. 
Uh, but the e-bike user is probably looking for a bit more compliance on the compression damping. So on the 38, that has been adjusted because the chassis is already stiff enough for e-bike use. On the 36, though, uh, we actually worked with a similar adjusted damping configuration for more increased comfort, but the stiffness of the chassis of the uh, regular fork for 36 for regular bikes is a little bit softer, so we increased wall, wall thickness on some of the tubings here. So there you go. That was a short, long answer. But I think, Elmar, it's really important. I think, you know, e-bikes, we're looking for traction, climbing, descending. Interesting, actually, we had a conversation with a, with a very high-performing e-bike racer the other day, and they go for softer compression. Elmar, thanks so much for your insight. You're welcome. So we're at the Canyon Booth. It says free coffee, free stuff, and free hugs. Daniela! <laughs> no, not all yeah, coffee. come on! <laughs> Where's the hug? It says free hugs! <laughs> okay, uh, i just ridden the Knox EPM with the Fazua Ride 60 system in there. Now, the great thing about a festival is you get to hear gossip, rumours of things that are happening. And this has got the Ride 60 in it. And having a quick spin, it definitely feels different for some reason. Hmm. Eagle-eyed Louis behind the camera spotted this very custom DT bike. It's actually uh, a Rotfield uh, RX375. It's, I think it's a classic example of a lightweight e-bike, but with the right component parts suitable for the use it's going to get. Uh, this bike is easily sub 20 kilos. Uh, let me talk about some of the DT parts at first. It's got a, the 535 fork on there. Um, the DT wheel set. Now, this is the 1501 Spline 1 wheel set. It's actually been sold as the wheel for light support e-bikes. So we're seeing lots of lightweight e-bikes, you know, around about 17, 18 kilos, but they've got the wrong parts on them. They've got parts which are simply going to wear out, you know, in no time. So I think the, the story which DT are talking about, and I, I totally agree with them, it's not about the abuse that e-bikes get, but it's simply the use that they get. You know, when you're buying an e-bike, I think the wheels are a very, very key part. I mean, this is the, the 1501 Spline 1, which comes in at, I think it's about 1691 grams. The price around about 1600 euros, but you can get a similarly performing wheel set, say the DT Swiss uh, 1701 Spline, half the money and probably only 300 grams uh, less in weight. Remember, that's a, an aluminium wheel set compared to uh, a carbon one on this bike. A few other parts on this bike, you've got the Duratissima uh, brakes in here, super strong, you've got the SQ Lab seat. And um, remember, this is the RX375, which gives you 60 newton meters. It's like a, a tuned down EP8 motor. So a beautiful bike. Looks aluminium, it's actually carbon. Wow, day one at Garda Festival, and I'm already spent. We've still got another two days. There's already a ton of new kit, which we've not seen before, when it comes to displays, remotes, a couple of new motors. Uh, and some new bikes. So guys, join us on Sunday, uh, maybe not in the sun, for part two of Reva Festival.